Standing behind me is one of the coolest things that I have ever witnessed, and I'm finally glad to say that I am in college now, starting my first week of college and the living the life of it. In today's video, we're going after a special target in Cygnus to finally kick off the time that I have finally returned to astrophotography, and that's tonight in a dream location because I am finally back from my recovery, and I'm here to say this is my first night of coming back after my surgery. And we're going to be imaging right next to the largest observatory in the state of Indiana, the Holcomb Observatory, right here in Butler University, where I'm going to college. So stick around to witness the full extent of how I take pictures of astrophotography, how I do it here, living the college life, just ending my first week of school. And of course, I'll be revealing the image that I get at the end of this video to finally kick things off. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. And I'm sure before I start this video, you guys are probably all wondering what I was talking about regarding my injury. So let me sit down and break it down for you. Oh, these benches are actually really, really nice. I just thought I would put that out there. There's tons of them here. So what happened to me? Well, let's start from the beginning. This happened July 11th. And as you can see from my arm, if you guys can see that, I have a scar that is 13 inches and probably went through the worst moment of my entire life not too long ago. On July 11th, somebody broke my arm in the worst way possible. The type of bone break was a spiral fracture and this should never have happened to me and I still can't believe to this day that it actually happened. I remember the sheer amount of pain and the numbness in my arm literally getting sent flying back. I got rushed to the ER and if you guys are not familiar with what a spiral fracture is, it's literally when your arm twists and breaks in a spiral motion. And because of this, my right humerus broke almost in half towards the elbow. And I just remember crying in the hospital to my parents, to my sister, who's also a nurse, just explaining and crying, why did this happen to me? Why would this ever happen to me right before I start school, six weeks before I start school? Why did this have to happen? And my parents and my sister didn't even know what to say because the future was completely uncertain for me. I had a spiral fracture, one of the worst fractures that you can have in your body, and I said to my parents, how am I going to be able to do my astrophotography? How am I going to be able to make videos? How am I going to play guitar? How am I going to lift weights? And the truth of that is, well, I couldn't. For a month and a half, I couldn't do any of those things. And it really tore my heart in half. Seeing all the things that I loved and enjoyed doing, just being stripped away for so long and being stuck at home, not being able to shower yourself, having people spoon feed you because one of your arms is immobile. And when I got the news that I needed surgery, it put things really more into perspective, just how serious this break was and how it shouldn't have ever happened. I got my surgery and now I have two plates and 14 screws in my arm. The rehab for this requires extensive physical therapy, which I luckily got through and have flown through, but also dealing with the long year of having no sensation or feeling in your elbow. A 13 inch scar later and 42 staples out, I have radial nerve palsy, which is another sense of radial nerve damage that's temporary. I might not be able to feel parts of my arm potentially for years, but I should be able to get most of it back in the span of a year. I remember my hand being completely numb like this, and I couldn't even move my hand up when I got my wrap off. And I was very scared for school because how am I supposed to survive and write? And truth be told, I really can't write still. My hand is still very shaky. So to sum things up, I was truly heartbroken by this injury. It was definitely the most painful thing that I have ever done in my entire life and the most mentally challenging thing that I have ever gone through as an individual. I can't thank you guys enough for the support that I got when I broke the news to the social media that have been following me for years because I knew that astrophotography would be something that I would not be able to do for a very, very long time. I missed all the clear nights and a lot of the things this summer due to this injury and it really makes me mad that this had to happen and that I got to miss out on a summer that was supposed to be truly magical and a spectacle for me right before I went to college. But sometimes life does not always work out for you in the way that you want it to and it depends on how you deal with it to move forward. I remember being so motivated to finally get things up and running, um, my body, my arm, everything. I just wanted to be done with 
the quarantine that I was in and having people spoon feed me and having to and having to wash my hair I was just done with it I was fed up and because of that I did aggressive extensive physical therapy I beat all those things and here I am rebuilding myself and starting to work out and I can finally say that I'm starting to do astrophotography again and this is my first night back even though we're in a totally different location at my college and I'm just had about three days of classes so far. I'm still very excited and do have a lot of time as of right now to get things up and running to do everything astrophotography related. So now that we talked about that, I will do a more extensive video on my injury and how I dealt with it. But now back to the video, we are going to talk about the imaging sequence tonight and a little bit of background about where we are because this is a truly special place here. And it really truly is a magical place, guys. I'm gonna be honest, these walks, are gorgeous. You can see everything and just over these trees we'll be able to see the infamous Holcomb Observatory which is where I'm setting up. If we just walk past one of these pharmacy buildings, there is where I'll be shooting tonight, the observatory. And I actually have a class in there which is really really cool. We also did meet the professor and the professor was out stargazing not too long ago. So really cool that we're actually able to kind of share the love for astrophotography and if you guys remember I was here not too long ago, last year, just doing the solar eclipse video. So, this is crazy. behind me guys is the infamous Holcomb Observatory and Planetarium and it's really crazy that me and Ryan can say that we actually have a class in here. This features a 38 inch Cassegrain telescope, the largest in Indiana for an observatory, which is really crazy. The entire state of Indiana. It was built in 1954, so it's also pretty new in terms of observatories because a lot of them are pretty old. The great thing about the observatory is that right now we're kind of on top of a giant hill, so we get to see everything. We get to overlook the campus while we're imaging, so it really gives us a beautiful look at our college that we picked and also a beautiful look at the sky. This is probably about roughly the same type of sky area that I have back at home, so I'm very lucky that I don't have any obstructions over there as well. And to kick things off for tonight and the first time back, because I'm very excited, we're gonna go after something that's a little bit more simple in astrophotography related terms. We're gonna be taking a picture of the Seder region or the Butterfly Nebula, a target that I have done quite a few times. It is really good to have a target as reliable as this one to get a quick image and share it and make sure that everything we have is working like we have because we are in a new area so we have to make sure that everything works. The Seder region refers to the hydrogen alpha gaseous regions of the star Seder that lies in the Cygnus region. The Cygnus constellation is easily findable in the night sky especially in the seasons of summer and early fall so make sure you guys are going out and photographing this if you're in the northern hemisphere because it really is a gem. I also learned that the sky here is surprisingly a Bortle 7 not a Bortle 8 like my backyard and it's crazy because we are really close to Indianapolis and the skies here are actually surprisingly dark and I think a lot of that has to do with the light situation here on Butler. All the lights are facing down and not upwards so it really does protect the sky. Now we also do have a half moon but that's really not going to cause a problem for us since Cygnus rises a little bit over on this side. You can see Cassiopeia is over there as well and Polaris is right behind me so we do have a really good situation here in terms of our accessibility of space and everything else. We were actually here last night doing a trial run to make sure that our Wi-Fi and everything worked and everything works great. So tonight's gonna be our first actual night of imaging and hopefully gonna grab around two to three hours. I'm hoping that eventually I can just leave this thing out here and we don't have to worry about it but we'll see once we get more pronounced here in the area. And so now looking at my campus from behind, what do I really hope to achieve here? Well, I hope to teach a lot of people about the world of astrophotography here. I feel like we've already made ourselves a really good presence here and meeting the people and discussing to strangers kind of how the whole astrophotography thing works is really something that is uplifting, especially considering that this is a big science school and they have a large observatory and astronomy program here. So it'll be really interesting to see how things go along those lines. But I hope that at least many people will hopefully stop by when I'm out imaging 
and maybe just ask a couple questions about what we really do because it really is something that is truly special and magical and I hope that everyone should know how the whole astrophotography hobby works. I mean, this is why I have this YouTube channel to teach and inspire and share my experiences of photographing space for you guys to enjoy. And boy, the time has finally come. I can finally say that we are finally imaging the Seder region after the longest time of not doing astrophotography, getting over my injury, and finally in a new place, Indianapolis, Butler University. Here we are, we're up and running. Man, I just have so much energy here because dude, this is an entirely new place. I have an hour left to do everything. It's Labor Day weekend over here. So I have a time to sleep in tomorrow. I got all my schoolwork done. Man, it feels great to finally be here. We're running about 180 second subs right now, and the subs are looking great, of course, and I really can't wait to show you guys this image. It really is going to be the best part of the college experience right now, for me at least, because this is great. There's no one around. It's just me, the observatory, Orion Astro, who is joining me here, and it honestly feels amazing to be back here. All right, guys, the time is currently 10.50, and I think this is one of the coolest angles of the entire thing. You have the BU sign here along with the observatory. It just looks absolutely great out here. And like I said previously, I was here not too long ago, about a year ago, doing the solar eclipse with Ryan and I walked just down these steps over here looking at this entire field being filled from the solar eclipse. And now I'm here carrying on the legacy of the astrophotography kind of regime here, photographing the Seder region and I'm probably only going to get about an hour on this. The one thing that I'm having trouble with right now and I'm sure it'll probably get better throughout the year, but we can't just leave our setups out here in our backyards because well we don't have backyards here. We're imaging in public space which means that if we leave our stuff out here people can easily grab it or do whatever they want with it out of plain curiosity. So that's why I'm hoping that eventually we can find a place that's a little bit more secluded and secretive where we can photograph things that doesn't have us worrying about whether someone might steal something or not. It's kind of crazy that we're probably the only astrophotographers in this entire college that really take this thing seriously. So it's really crazy to see that we're the only ones out here and we've had a couple people stop by and ask us what's going on, what is this? And we saw you guys over there. And we also have had some police officers circling us around so they're just making sure we're not doing anything crazy or stupid. But beyond all that, I am very glad to be here. Bowler University was one of my top picks for a college. Actually, it was my top pick. I didn't really have any other interests. This place just felt like home to me. The staff, the professors, the students, everyone here has really made me feel like this is somewhere where I can be very comfortable and this is only my first week of college and I'm still saying that. Seeing these solar eclipses here definitely changed my perspective oh my on how I view this place and I couldn't wow. be more glad to call this place my second home for education. Wow. So without further ado guys I'm going to show you guys the result that I got under incredible. a college filled sky right next to Indianapolis with my camera and telescope set up right incredible. behind incredible. the Grand Holcomb Observatory. Boy that is just so cool and I'm so glad to be back the injury has kept me out for so long, but here we are, we're thriving, we're back, and we're here to stay. Hopefully no more injuries though, because that would suck. All right guys, take care, peace out, and clear skies.